Well, hello, and I want to welcome you to the Victory Church Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Horton. I'm here to bring you a short message that's designed to help you become all that God created you to be and to live your life to the fullest. Thank you so much for listening. Let's get into today's message. Well, I'm so glad to be with you again today. We, uh, or we are in the change of seasons, uh, uh, full throttle right now. Uh, we, for the, I think, the first time turned our heat on at home, and uh, the leaves are turning, and the, and um, it's getting cooler. And don't you love the change of seasons? You know, one thing I thought about today is I got up and it was a brisk, a brisk morning, so chilly. Uh, is that the seasons change, but you know what? The Lord never changes. Aren't you glad to know that? That there's one person in our lives that we can always depend on to always be the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. James 1.17 mentions the seasons changing in, in, con- in contradistinction to God who never changes. Um, James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. New King James says, uh, um, uh, another version says this contemporary English version, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father who created all the lights in the heavens. Uh, and that's talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, etc. He is always the same and never makes dark shadows by changing. And that's what that verse is saying, that God doesn't change like the seasons do. Again, Philip's translation says it well, but every good endowment that we possess and every complete gift that we have must come from above from the Father of all lights with whom there is never the slightest variation or shadow of inconsistency. I love that. Isn't it great to know that you can pen- You can depend on our God to come through and to help us in every situation of life. Hey, we've been talking about uh, God's healing power. Uh, This is, uh, boy, we're well in, we're we're, uh, winding down to the end of this. It'll be just a few more podcasts. This is actually part 10 on ways on uh, healing belongs to you. And uh, I'm going to begin today on talking about just the introduction of seven ways you can be healed. Uh, Real quickly, let's uh, go back and recap uh, things that I have shared uh, about divine healing as we have um, been talking about it on the podcasts all these months of time at this point. Uh, Part one, we talked about healing uh, that comes two ways, either through spiritual gifts, which is the gifts of healings, or by God's sovereignty, and uh, healing by faith in the finished work of Jesus on the cross comes by faith, and so healing comes through spiritual gifts by God's sovereignty, or healing comes by faith in the finished work of Jesus by what he did on the cross, and we again receive that by faith. So God initiates spiritual gifts. There's no guarantee that's going to happen, but you know, we can always initiate healing in our own physical bodies by faith. Um, uh, we, the next part we looked at, part two, was uh, uh, reasons Christians are sick, and there are three major reasons, lack of knowledge, weak faith, disobedience. If any of these you haven't heard, go back in the podcast and you can look at the titles and listen. I really encourage that. There's so much information here. Part three, uh, we talked about seven reasons that you can uh, know that healing is always the will of God for you. We took several podcasts as we looked at part three and the reasons you can know that healing is always the will of God for the believer. Part four, we talked about the healing covenant Took a couple of podcasts to talk about that, where Israel came out of Egypt, and right out of Egypt, God initiated a healing covenant with his Old Testament people, and he revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our physician, the Lord our healer. And he never changes from that title. Part five is healing in the atonement of Christ. Isaiah 53, we took several uh, podcast to look at that in great detail, healing in the atonement of Christ. Jesus took our sicknesses the same time and with the same sacrifice that uh, took our sins. And so part six, we talked about how to receive healing by faith, a number of podcasts there, went into really great detail there. Part seven, we talked about planting the seeds 
of health and healing. If you can understand how to plant a seed in the ground and, and uh, you know, you have some green beans or some corn or, for, or some butter beans, whatever you cook, uh, uh, planted, then you can know how you can reap a crop of health and healing by planting the seeds of God's word in your life and allowing them to germinate like the seeds in the soil germinate. And then you reap the crop from whatever you've planted. Part eight, we talked about healing hindrances. And we took um, actually part eight, part nine, uh, healing hindrances, uh, four major categories of healing hindrances. And uh, we went into detail on that. And today we're going to start talking about um, ways you can be healed. And um, uh, this is just a preface to that. Uh, this part 10 is seven ways you can be healed. So again, find your level of faith. That's important. If we're going to receive from the Lord, know where your faith is. Know what you can believe God for without wavering. Again, faith is a strong conviction of heart. Uh, faith is an assurance that what God says is in your life. It's not something you're going to get one day. That's hope. But faith says, I believe right now that what God says about me is true and acts that way. So again, uh, healing from God is always received by faith. And we're talking about how to receive healing in a real practical way. Romans 4.16, New International Version says there, this, therefore the promise comes by faith so that it might be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who were of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. So again, um, anything we receive spiritually from God has to be received by faith. And uh, that's what Romans 4.16 brings out. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. Anything coming from the grace of God. And the grace of God is everything that Jesus did for us when he went to the cross and died for us and then was raised from the dead. Everything that Jesus gave us in grace through his sacrifice, we have to appropriate or bring into our lives by exercising our faith. Of again, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for it's by grace you've been saved through faith, and that is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone could boast. So again, we receive from God what Jesus provided for us by faith. So when it comes to healing, we need to ask ourselves, what can I really believe? Remember that we talked about some time ago about the fact that there are levels to our faith and that you've got to do things necessary to cause your faith to grow. So here's a mistake, again, a lot of people make. They try to, they try to bite off like my mama when I was a little boy. said, Mitch, you're biting off more you can chew when I take off a big piece of steak or whatever, and I had too much in my mouth and that was generally what I did. But, and so, again, we can do that with our, with our faith. That is, that is uh, try to do too much with not enough. So don't try to lift a 200-pound faith load with only 50-pound faith, all right? So we have talked about it in the detail in past podcasts. We need to cover it again. There are different levels of faith. And we talked to remember about different levels of faith that the Scripture talks about. It talks about great faith. The Bible talks about, Jesus talked about, uh, well, the Apostle Paul talked about weak faith. Uh, the Apostle Paul talked about strong faith. Jesus talked about little faith. Paul talked to the Thessalonian believers about growing faith. And then there are some people that just kind of got off the faith wagon. They had shipwrecked faith. So, you know, it's important to understand how to walk by faith if you're going to receive healing from the Lord. And, and this is something that's just real practical. With the Lord, start small and then increase. You know, with everything in life, my mother taught me when I was a little boy, I'd get frustrated because I had a big project at school or I had some big thing that my dad wanted me to do at home and it was a project or whatever. And, um, and, and years ago, back in the early 60s, when I was little, uh, I was taught inch by inch, it's a cinch. Yard by yard is very hard. You remember that if you're my age? So uh, again, start small. Everything in life, you start small. Our relationship with the Lord, we're infants and then we grow. Everything in life is that way. So our faith is that way as well. Start small and then increase uh, increase what we can do with our faith. Don't try to believe beyond your own faith. It, it just won't work well. Let me say this again. 
I've said this in the past podcast, if you're believing God for healing and you're struggling and wondering if it's going to happen, you're not in faith. Because faith is a knowing that what God promised is happening to you right now. And if you don't have that knowing deep inside, you may be you know, doing more than you can with the faith that you have. So, so you might need to back up a little bit. So, so ask yourself this question, what can I believe without doubting at all? That's really, really important, an uh, important question to ask. We need to locate our faith so we can know, locate what we can believe. Listen again, faith produces a strong conviction of heart. You just know that you know that you know that you know. And I think um, Oral Roberts would say something like that. I know that I know that I know. And these other men of God who of yesteryear who taught the word of God, you know, he's again he's talking about a strong conviction of heart. You just know that you know that everything's okay with you because you believe you receive your healing right now. So again, Decide what you can start believing with a strong conviction. You know, if you start out wondering if this is going to work, hey, hey, you, you're, you're starting at the wrong place, okay? So, so this is what I've done all my life. Listen, if, if, if you're be- needing to believe God for healing, and let me encourage you, if it's not a life-threatening situation, but it is there and it needs to be dealt with, I've done this all my life. Y'all take time before you pray about something. Get in the word of God. You know, before I pray about things, whether it's related to healing or not, I usually get into the scriptures. I've got scriptures that I have uh, amassed since I've known the Lord this 47 years uh, that I read regularly just to keep my faith in God built up in general, faith in prayer built up. And, you know, do the same thing if you're believing God when you need to believe God for healing. Build your faith up first. Go to the scriptures where God has promised to heal. There's a boatload of them that I've shared here in these podcasts. Go to the scriptures again, and first of all, read the scriptures slowly, meditate on them, and build healing up in your inner consciousness. Again, plant the seeds of health and healing by meditating on the word about healing. So you build up your faith. Ideas, build your faith up before you pray. Don't wait till after you pray to build your faith up. No, no, start strong. Start your faith strong. And faith comes by hearing God's word. So again, read the word, meditate on what you read, and just let it go over and over inside of you. And I've given you lots of scriptures about health and healing. If you'll read those, meditate on them, think about them. Often when you meditate, just say, quote the scripture out loud to yourself. Um, that it might be fulfilled, Romans, I mean, Matthew 8, 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Quote that over and over again. Build up your inner consciousness uh, for healing uh, and build up your faith before you pray. James, James 5, 14 says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save or heal the sick, it's saying. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, um, he will be forgiven. Let me ask you a question. So, you know, this this is an admonition from the uh, practical half-brother of Jesus, James or Jacob is his real name. And uh, so uh, he says, call for the elders of the church and let them lay hands on you and pray uh, that you may be healed. So let me ask you a question. Who determines whether or not the prayer of faith is prayed when someone prays for you? Well, again, the person praying, yes, they must pray in faith, but the prayer of faith is really determined by the person receiving the prayer. Yeah, that's the person that determines whether, whether or not faith is really, really being exercised. They have to receive by faith when they're prayed for. So again, uh, some people, let me say it this way, some people have faith to receive without medical intervention, and some people have a belief, have a belief system that if they can go to the doctor and get some medication, 
that, that, that the Lord will help them to get over that. See, that's a different level of faith. You know, it's a hi- much higher level of faith to believe without any, any medicine, without any medical intervention or what, uh, whatsoever, that a condition will leave your physical body. You know, it takes, it takes practice to get there. And let me just be real with you. Uh, people, a lot, most people are not there today because they're not doing the things to pay the price to develop their faith. And when I talk about these things as a pastor, and I've preached this all of my life. I've been in ministry since 1981. And since, listen, since 1976. Now that dates me, but listen, since 1976, almost on a daily basis, I have gotten the Word of God and planted the seed of the Word of God inside me. And I've meditated and I've spoken God's Word out loud thousands and thousands of times over a period of 47 years. So when I'm preaching and talking about divine healing by faith, you got to understand behind what I'm saying, there is a lot of time that I've personally spent just planning the word in my life, meditating on the word by speaking it out loud, by allowing it to revolve over and over and over in my mind. And what does that do? It builds your faith up. But, you know, if you try to do what I'm doing, but you haven't done what I've done, it won't work. Let me say it again. If you try to receive healing the way I receive healing, but you've not paid the price to get it the way I paid the price to get it, you won't receive a healing that way. So again, find out where you are and see there's no condemnation in that. You just got to practically know where you are in faith and what can I believe? So ask yourself, you know, what can I believe firmly without fear without wavering. See, that that's that's where your faith is. So again, uh, some people like me who have just been in the Word and gotten in the Word and, uh, you know, just really said, I'm going to do this. This is going to be part of my life. Well, you know, you pay the price to do that, and then you generally build your faith up, and then you can receive healing uh, in, in a stronger, stronger, stronger way. I started out believing God for small things, for a hangnail, no kidding, to be healed, for warts to leave my body, for a skin condition to be healed, for a, for God to heal me of the flu or the cold, uh, uh, et cetera, and just seeing things that weren't necessarily life-threatening. But you see, you exercise your faith in the small things, and then get it gives you confidence incrementally to believe God for more and more things. And that's what I really wanted you to see today is that, you know, find out where your faith is. Some people need to see the doctor. I have no problem as a pastor. I've actually actually taken people to the doctor, and if necessary, pay their doctor's bill, whatever, whatever, because I could see that they're not yet ready to receive like I would want them to receive, uh, which is by faith. But but if they're not there, they're not there. And if you're not there, you're not there. There's no condemnation in that. So again, um, uh, find out where you are and start believing God with where you are. It may be that you believe that you can go to the doctor, find out what it is, get some medication, and you'll believe God. Well, that's a level of faith. It's not the highest level, but it is a level. It's a way to start. But start believing God where you are. Again, if there's fear and there's wavering, or there's unsureness, so you're not quite ready. You're biting off more than you can than you can handle by faith, right? So, so again, don't don't try to don't try to push a don't try to push a hundred pound problem out of your body with with twenty five pound faith. That's again another way to look at it. What I'm trying to say is uh, is be practical with yourself. So again, it's not a sin to see a doctor. And um, it's it's not wrong to do that. It's just, you know, it's a different level of faith, and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with taking medication if you must. But again, the idea is, you know, from a biblical standpoint, start building up your faith in God's Word by reading it, by meditating in it, by saying it out loud over and over. And then in the small things, exercise your faith. So, um uh, and, and so again, taking medication, take the medication. But in the middle of that, start believing God. Start believing that you receive healing. And you know what? Maybe one day that you're able to get off the medication. And I've given you some really illustrations of people who have done that incrementally and just a little tiny bit at a time. So again, today summarizing, ask yourself, can my convictions from the word of God that I've placed within me, carry me through the period of time, uh, from the time that I pray 
until the time the healing actually manifests and there are no more symptoms and there are no more pain because that's where the rub is. Once we pray and believe God, sometimes prayer is instant. Many times it isn't, and it's a fight of faith. See, faith, again, let me say it, takes the place of what we do not have yet in physical manifestation, but God promised it, and the faith takes the place of it until it shows up. So when you're walking by faith, you can be as excited when the symptoms are there and the pain is there and the discomfort is there as you would be the day that you wake up and there is no more symptoms. There is no more pain. Y'all, I have had that happen to me hundreds of times where God just undertook and healed my physical body. It's a wonderful thing for God to come through and heal you. And when, when that happens, see, it's just kind of, you know, you, you tighten your belt a little bit in faith. And, you know, it makes your faith a little bit stronger. And that's what you want to do. So we come back next time. And I want to be talking about seven ways to receive healing. There are different ways to exercise faith in God for the healing of our physical bodies that Jesus provided for us when he died and rose from the dead. And I want to talk about that beginning next time. So, Father, I just pray for all of us today that, Lord, we would understand the dynamics of walking by faith, uh, the dynamics of building our faith up, and the dynamics of exercising faith and being sure that what you have promised, you're able also to perform, believing that right now we have what we ask for. Lord, and I thank you for ministering to every person that has listened to this podcast today and drawing us to you in faith. In Jesus' name. Looking forward to talking to you about this next time. God bless you. Thanks for listening to the Victory Church weekly podcast. I hope you're able to get something out of the message today. Before you leave, please make sure uh, that you subscribe or leave a review on whatever platform that you're listening from. Doing this goes a long way in helping us reach a wider audience. Lastly, If you want to reach out with questions, concerns, prayer requests, or comments about today's content, you can email me at pastor at victorychurchraleigh.com. I would love to hear from you. Go out there and be all that God created you to be today. God bless you.